So if reports are to be believed, Warner Brothers, they have long-term plans extending beyond anything you've heard about Aquaman 2, anything you've heard about Justice League. Yeah, their long-term plans. They're considering a spin-off Mira movie starring a certain actress out there. And this, I find it fascinating. Why do I find that fascinating? Because they've already picked up 1.5 million signatures and counting for this role. What do they think? They need three They need five. They need ten million or more. Are they going with this idea that all press is good press? How about you and I? We talk about this for a little while. While we're on this discussion, I thought we would bring up this, too. Why? Because Marvel Studios' name has been brought into the mix, as has Kevin Feige, as that same actress has reportedly been in talks with Kevin Feige to join the MCU. Now, while I'm not sure about this person's name being dropped here, I could see this definitely transpiring with Disney. So, yeah, let's talk about this. Let's talk about Warner. Let's talk about so, so much more. So, hey there. So, today, you and I, We are returning to that wonderful, wonderful world of Hollywood culture where apparently you can go out, you can do well, you know what exactly has been done, and well, you can have a job with The Stand, you can have a job with Justice League, and apparently now you can go out and you can be considered in some long-term plans. And those long-term plans, like the article says here, they include a spin-off mirror movie starring a certain actress reportedly being considered by Warner Brothers Pictures. Now granted, this is still at the unconfirmed reportedly level, but if you're one of those people that says, yeah, that can be possible, I would refer you to recent events, and I would also refer you to what's here on the screen, Aquaman 2018. See, remember, there was not a lot of faith in this movie. You saw $160 million dropped into the budget, but this movie, it was talked about like it would not succeed. And look at the numbers that it brought in for that budget. Domestic box office alone, it brought in $335,061,807. Internationally, though, it brought in $808 million, nine. Nine hundred and four thousand seven hundred and thirteen dollars for a worldwide box office of one billion one hundred and forty three million nine hundred and sixty six thousand five hundred and twenty dollars. See this in my opinion, it doesn't just explain what's happening with Warner Brothers as of late, but also when you look at those international box office numbers, I mean really look how high they are here. Look at how dependent they are on that. It explains why certain articles have been coming up and they're not aimed at a domestic audience. Oh no, when you see people talking about that UK decision, they're talking to people not only in the UK, but they're talking to people all over Europe. They're talking to people in China and on. You know, because of course, you've got to secure those numbers. I mean, that is how DC plans on making things work. And they don't just want Aquaman 2 to work. What they want to do is they want to build franchises. They want to emulate the MCU success. I mean, really, who wouldn't want to? And they haven't been able to do that with Superman. They haven't been able to do that with Batman. So they're banking on the idea that Aquaman and spinoffs from that, that's going to ensure them some type of success. Now, this report, it came to us from Geekosity's Mikey Sutton, and he's been talking about other things recently, and I found these interesting because he was talking about contracts, specifically contracts with Warner Brothers, contracts that would impact a nameless person, and why that nameless person, they were treated differently than Johnny Depp. He said, quote, Warner Brothers cannot fire that nameless person for the same reasons they could not fire Depp. They were talking about him at the beginning, by the way, continuing. Typically, it is impossible for a studio to break their contract with an actor unless criminal charges have been filed against them. While the court of public opinion may have found that nameless Percy guilty for, well, you know all of the statement there, I'm not going to rehash it, the teeming masses have no power in American civil or criminal court. Likewise, the studio cannot ask that nameless person to step down as they did Depp, as there has been no civil judgment against them. Now, I don't know about you, but when I see conversations like that, ooh, they set my teeth on edge. Why? Because this puts the impetus on someone trying to clear their name, saying, hey, 
I'm the aggrieved party here, and if that doesn't work out with you, well, so long and thanks for the memories, and thanks for the millions or even billions of dollars you've made us. Now, eventually, all these conversations these days, they turn to one common point, and that common point, it's signatures. These are the signatures on the change.org petition. This is one petition alone, and this is a petition to remove that specific actress you know you want to build a franchise around. Yeah, this is talking about removing them. Now, before Warner Brothers' uh, discussion on this, this had around 500,000 signatures, and those signatures had been languishing. But after the Fantastic Beast 3 decision, this thing jumped up to over a million signatures. Now, you would think that this would matter, but according to people like Mikey Sutton, no, they don't matter at all. Why? Because, quote, quote, and really listen to this here, they see it no different than the boycott of Marvel Studios' Captain Marvel film, which proved to be ineffective as it brought in over a billion to Disney. So they're saying, basically, you can't hurt that film. In fact, this is inflated online. It means nothing. You can't arm this whatsoever. Continuing, they believe it's artificially inflated and most likely politically motivated. That's fascinating, too. This, it's politically motivated. You know what they're saying? saying about you. You're alt what now? Yeah, don't you love having those things thrown on you? Like I said, you're an ist. Like I said, you're a phobe now, and apparently you're politically motivated in this. And finishing it, they said they don't base their decisions on web chatter. So all this is, is idle gossip. All it is, is politically motivated, artificially inflated web chatter. Keep that in mind, huh? Now, speaking on Marvel and speaking on Disney, them not to be outdone, you have this come up. Now, when I'm discussing this, too, I want you to take this with a proverbial grain of salt. Why? Because this is not confirmed. At the same time, we do know that Disney, behind the scenes, they've been talking to a certain pirate person. They've been telling them in 2021, if things, they turn out a certain way, yeah, why don't you come back to us? Why don't you talk to us about that? And those things, they've got out into the public. And that, that is indeed happening. Now, to hedge their bets, as it were, this would be the kind of move they would make. They would want to make sure that they were saying, yeah, you know, we talked to that other person too. So, hence this. This person reportedly in talks with Kevin Feige to join the MCU. Now, I don't know if they would be in talks with Kevin Feige either. That would be talking to the big person themselves. But to join the MCU, yeah, that would make sense for the same reasons that everything makes sense for Warner Brothers, because you're talking about dollar signs. Like I said, they don't take the numbers out there. They don't take the petition seriously. They haven't taken everything else seriously. What they see there is Aquaman 2018. And they say, yeah, you know, because of all of this other stuff we've been having go on, oh, we need that. We need need that now. But anyway, let me know what you think about all of this stuff. When I saw it, I thought, are you kidding me? But at the same time, none of it. It surprises me at least. But like I said, leave your comments to this. I'm curious how you see this. And as always, thank you for showing up. Thank you for participating. You make these endeavors possible. Without you, none of this stuff works. So thank you sincerely. I mean it. These places out there, they've forgotten that. And hey, woe be it unto them. We never ever need to repeat those things. Also, you want to help out the channel? There's a few ways to do it. We have Patreon, we have PayPal, we have memberships, and of course, we have that luscious, luscious comic book. 